everyone. Today is April 4th, 2020, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. This week, there isn't a ton going on in the Duel world outside of the KC Cup. That started last week, and we're still going to be in Stage 1 until sometime later in the week, probably Thursday. Um, Professional Aster is still going on if you haven't collected those two new cards from him. But we're just going to talk about some esports to begin the episode. And um, quick rundown of those decks. A new card from the KC Cup. We'll talk about that one new card. Doug Dimadul has his uh, deck of the week, which isn't a casual deck of the week. It's the one he used to get through um, the KC Cup. A little rant from him as well about the proceedings. Since there's not a lot going on, this is going to be more of a catch-up episode. Going over the notable R's and N's of Fortress of Gears mini box. Talk about those archetypes. As well as Carly Carmine's leftover material, which is her level up cards. There's four level up cards from her, as well as her seven unique dual skills. Whether they're good, that's another, um, another issue. So... This disclaimer, I kind of half-assed you know, everything this week in this episode's preparation. I'm just completely uh, struggling and worn down by everything. I think it's more of the work-from-home struggle. I'm not really um, traumatized or dealing with many of the real issues that people are from uh, coronavirus, though I do technically work at a hospital. I'm not in the front lines like... Uh, the brave people who are, you know, taking care of people out there. But I think I'm doing this work from home thing, and it's it's a struggle for me. Um, and I've been haven't been outside in days, so it's been a, it's been it's been tough. But in Duel World, I've been playing I've been playing different decks just to try out stage one of the Kaiba Cup, and then I decided, um, you know, I might as well play something resembling a meta deck. I think I was playing Light Swarms before and um, doing different versions of Light Swarms, certain package decks. And then I decided on, um, I saw some, uh, Invoked as a you know, really good deck. So, of course, um, being that I don't spend a lot of money on this game, I have two Alistairs, two uh, Invocations, and one Purgatrio. So the one Purgatrio is really what's biting me right now. And... I'm trying to emulate these decks that run three of each card, you know, two Purgatrios. So I settled on a Magician Girl um, Invoke deck. And because I'm missing some of the cards, I decided to add a Synchro component to it. So I added some Scrap Goblins and um, two level seven Synchros and a level four Synchro. In addition to my three Invoked cards, so that makes up six in the extra deck. And... Um, I'm doing okay with it, actually. Once I started playing this deck, I started rising up again. Um, currently, DLV 17. I lost my uh, promotion match to 18 last night, so I, I stopped playing at that point. And, you know, it's a really janky deck, but it's doing okay for what it's worth. I'm not... It keeps me going. If I lose too many games, I'm going to stop playing and I'm going to do something else. That's just what it is. I can't, I can't sit around and lose too many games in a row. I'll feel bad. So... This deck is keeping me in it, and I think it's enough to get me through stage one. Um, I think some of the things is people don't really know how to play against some of the Magician Girl decks. It's not exactly meta deck, but it's good enough. It cycles through the deck very well. And, of course, to play Invoked, to be included in Invoked deck, you have to have the right attributes. So those monsters definitely do fit the bill in that regard. Um... That's all I have to say about myself. So, this week in esports, apologies for anyone who actually reads um, blog posts. I didn't write anything about these decks. So, let's just talk about the decks. KC Cup Weekly 118, um, Duel Links Meta Weekly 118, KC Cup Format. First place, X Junior Crazy God, Destiny Draw, Element Saber Invoked. Really, um, 30 card invoked. We've heard of fat invoked decks, 25, you know, 26. This is 30 cards. There's a ton of control going on. In the invoked core, three Alistairs, 
two invocations. Element Savers, three Malehu, one Lapoya, one Malo, one Nalu, three field spells. And then there's like a lot of control going on. Two Fiendish Chain, three Floodgate, two Mirror Wall. Um, Fusion Reserve is just to get your monsters back. Uh, two Memory Loss, one Wall of D, two Artifact Lancia, two Galaxy. And of course you run Concentrating Current with a semi-limit on um, Megalonica. Memory loss is a nice card. That's a card that is a zero for one. You don't you don't really destroy anything with it, but it's it's just as good as you know divine wrath or um, ultimate providence. Same ability. You just don't pay a card, and they go to defense mode. They don't lose. They just play their monster, and that's it. They switch to defense mode, and then they pretty much lose that turn there. So memory loss is a card I do like a lot. Second place, Fetty Guap, No Mortal Can Resist, Shiranoi, Pure Shiranoi deck. And you see some control elements here. Oh, it's not a Pure Shiranoi deck, it's an Invoke deck. There's two Alistars and one Invocation in this package. You see some interesting choices here. Two Void Trap Holes. This is if they special summon a monster with 2,000 or more attack, negate the effects of one of those monsters with 2,000 more attack, and destroy it. So, um, same thing. It's kind of like network trap hole. There's there's these special trap holes that come for different circumstances. This one um, it's definitely one that you can consider using if you do have this card. Um, given the how strong the meta is with special summons. And um, yeah, with this this Doug Dimondul is going to talk about a similar deck later on. But these decks just run Purgatrio because they're Shiranoi, they're fire, and then they run a bunch of the um, Synchro plays associated with it as well. List Squad is making itself as a staple in Shiranui decks as, um, you know, getting cards in the graveyard and also removal too. Third place, Godfather DL, Destiny Draw, Magician Girl Invoked. So, um, what this guy did was he put some Sphere Karibos into the deck and that's definitely not a bad idea against Luna Lights. Luna Lights are a deck that just keeps your monster on the board and then they kill you in that one turn. So Luna Lights, Cyber Dragons, those two heavy aggro decks that just seem to get perfect hands. This is a great card against them. So in this Element Saber Magician Girl deck, three Alistair, two Invocation, two Chocolate, three Berry, two Apple. They seem to have stacked more of the Magician Girls. Mine has only one Chocolate, one Apple, Three berries, two cosmic, one econ, two floodgate. Top four rock hoppers, no mortal can resist ritual beast. Very standard ritual beast deck. Three winda, three canahawk, one petal fin, one repengu, two elders, one apelio, one lara. Uh, each of the quick plays, one each ritual beast return, ritual beast bond, herald of the abyss to trigger no mortal can resist. Two Sphere Kribos, Cosmic, two Floodgates. Alright, so let's move on to Battle Phase 45. Anthox, Destiny Draw, Element Saber Invoked, 22 card deck. Destiny Draw, um, you have to make sure you're using cards that fit the bill. So, two Mirror Walls and then an Unending Nightmare. Two cards to help you lose life. Uh, probably at 2,000 each. Um, and an Unending Nightmare is a card that you could just lose... You can lose 3,000 life points if you want in that one turn. So, um, very solid control choice. What's interesting is that there's no concentrating current in this deck. I guess they could use Magellanica and hit for 1,000 with Alistair. 4,000 right there. But um, concentrating current with um, Coxidus seems like a good choice here, but it's not there. I can place you mad, transcendent crystals, crystrons. Again, not, there's not much change with crystrons. Same old deck. Not much to say there. A four. L three Alwa. Aggie sleeves, thunder dragons. Uh, this one has Jinzo in it. We're seeing that card come up now and then. Um, as is with you know baggy sleeves, they typically run artifact Vajra. That one just comes out for free. Gets destroyed, you get to draw cards. Otherwise, 
nothing too crazy here. I mean, Baggy Sleeves, Thunder Dragons are very creative decks. You could do whatever you want. This one runs a Watt Fox. It's another tuner. It's a Thunder Monster, too, so it works. Top floor, Dark Ragno, Transcendent Crystals, Crystrons. Again, not much to say. They kind of switch out whatever Crystal Beast they want to use. Sure, whatever. Battle phase 46. Anthox again. Second place a uh, first place. Destiny draw. Element Saber invoked. Same deck again. Uh two two ways to lose life points. Mirror walls and unending nightmares. Um yeah, same old thing again. Second place Pope Master. No mortal can resist. Invoked Shirnoi. Um this one runs an Artifact Lancia. It's kind of a tech card you could just use to prevent those banishes. Otherwise, the same control elements. Two Fiendish Chains, one Ballista Squad, two Floodgates. Sphere Kribo against those Luna Lights. Up four, Heaglian Boy, No Mortal Can Resist, Element Saber, Shiranui. I mean, Invoked Shiranui. Um, Not much to say about this one. It runs Tyrant's Temper, though. Tribute one monster to activate this card. All face of monsters on the field are unaffected by other trap cards. So this is similar to Ballista Squad. You you pay a monster and then you get something. But this one is your battle immunity against those traps. And top four, David Davidi Magri. Pure Shiranoid deck. 20 cards. Um, I want to say I've, I've spoken about how good this deck is. Just because it's a very lean core. Two Solitaires, three Squires, two Spirit Masters, one Shade, and two Spectral Swords, two Gold Sarcophagus, one Sphere three Cosmic, three Paleozoic, one Floodgate. Then there's a top honorable mention, top 16 Luns, Spell Specialist, pure uh, Light Sworn deck. We haven't really seen a pure Light Sworn deck make it. This deck just never really made it, but a uh, 30 card deck. Runs Grass Looks Greener. A spell Specialist, you got, three, you got six spells. So three Charge of Light Brigade, three Solar Recharge, one Melody of Awakening Dragon, one Card of the Soul, which is nice. Um, who does that give you? Card of the Soul. Oh. Maybe Chaos Dragon Levineer? I don't know. Um, anyways, it runs two Chaos Dragon Levineer, two Judgment Dragon, one Artifact Lancia. One Black Wing Zephyros, one Eclipse Wyvern, three Raiden, one Raiko Light Sworn, two Raiko Dark Sworn, two Kiteroids, one Felice, three Lumina, one Bacon Saver, one Minerva, and that's it. Move on to the uh, Duel Links Mana tier list update. In tier one, this is a disclaimer this is the last tier list from this top player council. So they're going to have a new council, which will decide the tier list from here on. So there might be some changes. Tier 1, Blue Eyes, Crystrons, Element Sabers, and Thunder Dragons have been moved up. They, they say um, Chaos Dragon Lemonier has really helped Thunder Dragons, but I haven't really seen it, but maybe they, they're right. Tier 2, Shirnoi is the sole deck here. Tier 3, Black Wings, Dark Lords, Dark Magicians have been dropped down. You'll see plenty of them in the Kaiba Cup, though. And Masked Heroes have moved up thanks to the Vision Heroes. Off the tier list, Cyber Dragons and Luna Lights. This is purely a tournament thing. You're going to see plenty of these decks in regular play, in ranked play, and also in Kaiba Cup things. So um, disregard this in any considerations of what you'll do in the tier list compared to... To, I mean, not in tournament settings, but in the regular settings. Talking about the Kaiba Cup, um, this is the main event that you'll have to do right now to get gems and other rewards. I highly recommend that you do it at least four times a day so you can get all the gems and also the card rewards that come with it. And of course, um, every time you level up, you're going to get some reward that's worth it. Um, you know, Even though if you... You hate it. It's probably something they should do since this card is this game is so reliant on this uh, stringent gem economy. So, you know, some people might not even get through stage one. That's just what it is. Um, hopefully, by the end, when pe- when everyone's get in stage two, it'll be easier to move up into the end of stage one. So, 
try your best, I guess. Um, I've included a link here from Duelix Meta of stage one decks, and you look through it, get some ideas of what you can build. That's what I did. Um, seeing as how I can't build most of these decks, but just looking at it, um, Element Sabers, Invoked, Vision Heroes, Shirinoi in their normal form, and then they also the Invoked form. Um, what's this? Terrors, Goonities, Dark Lords, Tristrons, More Element Sabers, Dark Magician, Vendreds, Vision Heroes, Cyber Dragons, Shirinoi, Shirinoi, um, Spiritual Beasts, Crystal Beasts. Yeah, I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. So, Blue Eyes, Magician Girl. This is where they got I got the idea for the Magician Girl in Volk decks. Um, I specifically run the Light and Dark X Junior Crazy Godmoon with the Silent Magicians, but of course I'm missing a bunch of stuff, so that's why I have the other stuff. Um, uh, um, Synchro component to it. Yeah, you could really do it with any deck. Just do your best and follow follow these decks, I guess. And know the meta, of course, that's important. One thing I want to say is that it's good to include cards that negate effects and destroy them as, at the same time. Something like Ultimate Providence, Divine Wrath is really good against this meta. You negate a monster's ability, they destroy it, and then you could just win that next turn sometimes. So it helps to do that a lot. Um, one new card from the packs that we get. We get four. We get a pack every day for doing the fourth duel. So you get three duels for gems and then one for for cards. So uh, scramble egg is the new card. Trap card. If a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, special summon a Sonic Chick from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So Sonic Chick was a card that they gave. While, like, I think in the last Kaiba Cup or something, it was some special event of some sorts. But it's a little monster that can, it's the same ability as Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, but it can't be destroyed by monsters with over a 1900 attack. So this is the same thing, and there was no use of using the side chick over Obnoxious Celtic Guardian before because it has less attack. And with this one, it gets a leg up over that card. As you can get this card from the graveyard, you can reuse the Sonic Chicks, or you can get it from straight from the hand or deck. So... There is a little bit of stall potential against ones that don't have other sources of removal, for example. But usually those cards, those decks that run those big beaters, they usually have smaller monsters as well. Like if I'm talking about Lunalites who just attack, they have smaller monsters. If we're talking about Cyber Dragons, they also have smaller Cyber Dragons that can attack through the Sonic Check as well. So they also have Cybernetic Overflow. So there's, decks typically have a way around of... Sonic Chick nowadays. Well, Doug Dimmeduel's deck of the week is going to get moved up here uh, just because it fits along with the Kaiba Cup. He'll talk about his Kaiba Cup experiences. And this is not any casual deck of the week. It's a pretty competitive deck. So check out his Shirinui Invoke deck. I talked about a lot of those already, but uh, we get a card-by-card -card basis here and some of the decisions he made about why he chose certain cards. Here's Doug Dimmeduel right now. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. So this week, I just want to go through the deck that I use to uh, finally climb to the top of the mountain, uh, get past stage one of the KC Cup. I have to say, just some of my thoughts on it are that uh, it's a very diverse meta. There's a lot of uh, rock, paper, scissors going on here. There's a lot of strengths and weaknesses of certain decks and how they match up. So a lot of it is based on 
in a lot of cases, the luck that you have uh, getting the good matchups that you're uh, that you're hoping to to get. Uh, and the problem that I I'm finding is that when you have to win five duels in a row to rank up from 19 to 20, and you just happen to go against the uh, the rock matchup while you're using the scissors deck. Um, Boy, it's a shame, and you end up taking a huge hit, and you got to kind of start climbing again and start you start your next win streak. Um, yeah, the win streak thing is is uh, uh, one of my peeves about the uh, the current uh, PvP environment. Uh, I'm, I'm much more of a fan of obtaining a certain win percentage over, uh, say, ten games or something along those lines, uh, so that you can afford those uh, those losses while still having the opportunity to rank up. Uh, because I mean, at the end of the day, an, an eighty percent win rate. I think is more than worthy of uh, ranking up to the next uh, stage on the ladder or 75% win rate. Uh, you know, that that's pretty dang good. So, yeah, rather than this whole win streak thing, nah, not a fan. But anyway, I digress. What deck did I end up using? Uh, it was a combination of two of my least favorite archetypes uh, as of this point because they've annoyed the crap out of me. That's uh, Shiranui's, which, of course, you know, running the Shiranui squire uh, you know, combo where you're trying to get into a quick synchro play. Thrown in with Alistair the Invoker. I know, it sounds like an absolute disaster, and it is. So, um, yeah, because of that, I'm, I was going up against a lot of Shiranui decks, so I wanted to splash in Alistair. And then at the same time, too, run my own Shiranui deck because uh, it has the ability to um, you know, do a few things. Now, the extra deck is where... I had to get creative, right? Um, I did not go for the level 8 or the level 10 Shiranui Synchro. I left those out of the deck because I'm running my two copies of Invoked uh, Purgatrio. Uh, if you remember that one, it requires Alistair the Invoker and one Fire Monster. This card gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls, and it can attack all monsters that your opponent controls uh, once each, and then it also inflicts piercing damage. So, uh, what I ended up putting in the extra deck are two copies of Shiranui uh, Squire Saga, the level 7 zombie, uh, where you can banish a card from the graveyard, depending on if it's a zombie or if it's fire, you get numerous effects, uh, usually to pop a uh, spell or trap card on the field, and sometimes if you're u- if you're using a, um, a zombie type, or sorry, if you're using a synchro zombie type, you can destroy one monster on the field as well. Uh, and then I just run my two copies of Shiranui uh, Samurai Saga. Uh, you know, just 2,500 beater. Pretty good card. But I only run one copy of Shiranui Spectral Sword. The level 2 zombie tuner, 800 attack, because it's semi-limited. The second semi-limited card I use in the deck is Kiteroid. Now, I have my two level 6 Shiranuis in the extra deck, and I have my Spectral Sword. Um, the reason being is that I want to use it once to send to the graveyard, and I want to use it once to banish using its effect, so I'm only going to have two potential opportunities to run a level 6 synchro. So I'm not trying to do much more than that, I'm not trying to get too fancy with it, um, but I do run my three copies of Alistair, I run my one copy of Sphere Karibo, this saved me in my rank up uh, match, where they had a cyber dragon, they were getting ready to attack three times, and ended up switching it to defense position, really blew him up, and won the game. Uh, and then, of course, I like to run my three Shiranui Spirit Masters. Being able to banish using the Alistair, the Invoker effect, is a very good thing. Run my two copies of Invocation as well. So that's it. It's a pretty fun deck. Um, you know, just have at it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, and then, of course, for good measure, your Shiranui Solitaire. So uh, then I want to run my, my two copies of Shiranui Spectral Sword Shade, the level three. And that's basically it. So uh, that's it for my KC Cup deck. I will see you next time. All right, thanks, Doug. And you can check him out on his podcast every week. Also, his own Twitter page, Yu Gi Oh! deck talk so some of the stuff that will be left over news will be will make up the rest of this podcast today um you have nothing to do um thanks for sticking by so
Fortress of Gears mini box. This was not the bad box that I mentioned. It was really, it's actually pretty good. Um, I mean, everyone should have Mass Heroes by now, so they have you know the cards to to play the new hero deck, and there's other other useful cards in here. Um, also, everyone should have the Aramage cards cards as well. So this also helps that deck. That's a that's a deck that I've seen a lot on the on Kyber Cup stage one and it's actually even though it's not a free-to-play deck anymore it's pretty cheap compared to every other deck because we have almost all the cards from the trader already so um it's not like it's not like the bad cards were the trader all the good ones are there too so um you just add a few more from this mini box and then you're golden so and really the Machina Fortress was the worst UR of these three. The, the other two are seeing a lot of play. The Vision Hero Ferris and the Ballista Squad are seeing a lot of play. The SRs are less so. I, I haven't seen any of these less SRs outside of Humid Winds. Vision Hero Increase, of course, for the hero decks. But then DLS makes it. I guess some of these could be useful. But I haven't really seen the other SRs. But I guess the URs are pretty good here. And they're, they're the same thing in this mini box. Let's talk about the heroes first. The R's and N's from the heroes. These are specifically vision heroes, though. Vision hero minimum ray, level 3, 1200, 700. If you take battle damage when this is in the graveyard, you can put it in the spell or trap zone as a continuous trap. During the main phase, if this is a continuous trap, tribute a hero, special summon this. If this is special summoned, the spell or trap zone, destroy one level 4 or lower monster your opponent can. So this is a okay stand-in if you don't have Vision Hero Increase. Same thing where it comes out of the Spar Trap Zone. That one you could special summon a monster from the deck and that helps you into your goal of of um, playing Vision Hero Vion and then Polymerization and all those things. This one just helps destroy a monster, which is okay. Um, it's not a bad ability at all, but sometimes they won't have that level 4 lower monster. Sometimes they'll just leave a big monster, and if it's a level 4 or lower, it'll probably be set face down. So, um, a little situational here, but then sometimes you can pop a monster, which is okay. I would only use this card if um, you haven't gotten Vision Hero Increase yet. This one is Vision Hero Multiply Guy. We're in the ends by now. Level 3, 800, 700. Um, same thing where if you take battle damage, you can it's in the graveyard, you can put it as a continuous trap. Tribute to Hero Monster, Special Summons card. If it's Special Summon from the Spell Trap Zone, make one face of Monster on the field, gain 800 attack. So this is not that great. Um, you can let your your Anki or your um, Diane hit over 3,000. I guess that's something. But, like, typically you'll Special Summon the Monster you'll want for the situation already without having to rely on 800 attack. Like, Vision Hero Trinity will have 5,000, so that's more than enough to get through anything. Um, also, Vision Hero Adoration has a turn-by-turn -turn debuff ability already, so that's more than you'll need than Multiply Guys, so it's a little extra. Vision Hero Gravito, level 4. If it's normal or special summoned, you can target one of your banished hero monsters added to your hand. You can tribute this card and target two Vision Hero monsters in the spell or trap zone, special summon them. So this is a little different. It doesn't become a trap monster himself, but it's a bit of a two for one, a one for two in that you can target the vision heroes and special summon them both, get their effects off. Um, this one you only use if you're playing some kind of dedicated vision hero deck, and that's not really a thing. People combine them with you know, masked heroes and also the elemental hero Stratus. So um, the pure vision heroes aren't a thing. Typically, you won't be running all of them together in a situation you'll just be running increase for the best deck vision fusion fusion summon a hero monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material and also using up to two monsters in the spell or trap zone used as continuous traps so this lets you use the extra vision heroes as material you can make trinity sure um problem is the problem with this card of course is that the main deck runs Vision Hero Vion, which tutors polymerization. This is not, while it's a fusion card, it's not considered polymerization, so that's the main weakness why it's not really run in 
the meta decks nowadays. Finally, Vision release spell card. Target one Vision Hero Monster in your spell or trap zone. Special summon it. During your main phase, except for the turn, this was sent to the graveyard. Banish this from the graveyard. Target a Vision Hero in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. So this, instead of costing a monster, this is a spell or trap. This might be worse than the card itself because costing a monster usually has some benefit to it. Last hero, I mean, Destiny Hero Celestial, you can draw cards. Destiny Hero Malicious, you could also get another monster out. So there's reasons they're in the graveyard, and this prevents like the monster from going into the graveyard, I guess. How about BLS cards? Two cards that work in conjunction with each other. They're really good cards. Beginning Knight, level 4, 500, 2000. Light Monster, if a Black Luster Soldier Monster is Ritual Summoned using this card, gain these effects. Um, you can only use each effect once per turn. I mean, use one effect once per turn. Once per turn, target one monster your opponent controls, banish it, or when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you activate its effect. You can make a second attack in a row. If this card is banished from the graveyard, you can add a Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand. To make BLS, you'll need 8 stars worth of material. you use this as one of them. And then you could use the ability to either banish your opponent's monster, or you can have it attack twice. And then at the end of the turn, when you've used the card as material, um, you could banish it from the graveyard and then add a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. Pretty good. Counterpart is be- uh, Evening Twilight Night. Same stats, but Dark Monster. Black Luster Soldier, Ritual Summoned by this card, gains these effects once per turn. Target one monster your opponent controls, banish it. Or, once per turn, you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand face down until your opponent's next end phase. As this is banished from the graveyard, add a Ritual Monster from your deck to your hand. This has a really tricky second ability in that you could disable a card from their hand. And then this could also work against, not only does this prevent what strategy they're using it hurts sphere Kribos or kite roids as well so really nice second ability and then you could get a spell I mean, you get a monster with this so with these two cards in in conjunction you could ritual summon a monster again so very nice cards for the, the new bls two other trap cards Super Soldier Shield Counter Trap. When a spell trap or a monster effect is activated, that targets a monster on the field. While you control a Black Luster Soldier monster, negate the activation. If you do, destroy that card. If this card is in your graveyard, you can remove one spell counter from your side of the field. Set this card, banish it when it leaves the field. So, it's a pretty good um, archetype counter trap. Archetype counter traps come in many forms. This one hurts spells, traps, and monster effects, negates, and destroys. Negating and destroy on a monster effect is really good. Um, the problem with BLS is that their cards have to line up and then you don't brick. So this does nothing while you don't have a BLS monster out. But when you do have one, it's very good. So you'll definitely want some of these if you are running a BLS deck because they don't really have that back row protection aside from banishing those monsters. Finally, Super Soldier Rebirth Trap Card Target 1, Black Luster Soldier Monster you control. Send it to the graveyard if you do. Special Summon a Black Luster Soldier Monster from your hand with a different name from that monster, ignoring its conditions. During the main phase, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard. Target 1, Black Luster Soldier Monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So, this can get you out of bricky situations, and then you could like get like Evening Twilight out or something, different type of BLS monster. Um... Depending on what you threw away for your cost, but it's a little situational on its own. I don't think this would be run. Um, typically, you'll just want the materials you want for BLS. Next up in archetypes are the resonators. They don't really have a card in the URs and SRs, but they, they're loosely affiliated with any of those Jack Atlas cards that are you know, red dragon, red cards. Synchron Resonator, level 1 Dark Fiend Tuner, 100-100. If a Synchro Monster is on the field, you can Special Summon this card from your hand. You can Special Summon one Synchron Resonator once per turn. This way, the card is sent to the, from the field to the graveyard. Target one Resonator Monster in your graveyard, except for this one added to your hand. So, the red 
hot red dragon archfiend bane um relies on being made with another dark dragon synchro monster so this one specifically works towards that cause in that you make your synchro monster you special summon this from the hand and then you can make another synchro it's also useful in some situations where you get a level eight at let's say um Scrap Dragon. Then you turn it into Vermilion Dragon mech, so 8 plus 1 is 9, and then you could control something else on the board. Red Warg. I can't see this card. Here it is. Level 6 Fiend, 1400, 2200. When you normal summon a Residator Monster, you can special summon this from the hand, but its attack becomes half. This card could be pretty useful in some kind of synchro toolbox with resonators. It comes out for free, six stars, and the resonators have different numbers of stars, so um, you can make anything like a level nine, a level seven, a level eight. Um, pretty good. I actually like this card a lot. It's going to make some new deck, I think, with some synchro toolbox ability. card is called Resonator Engine. All card target two Resonator monsters in your graveyard. Add one level four monster from your deck to your hand. If you do, return those targets to the deck. So, this is probably not worth using because it's situational, requiring two Resonators in the graveyard. You have to have pulled off a Synchro Summon with them already. Maybe two Synchro Summons, so only useful in that regard. Otherwise, not that not useful at all. Resonant Destruction Continuous Spell. Each time a Resonator is sent to the graveyard as a Synchro Material, target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. Destroy this card during your second end phase after activation. This helps control the board, but it's too easily countered anything Cosmic Cyclone. Um, and you'll have to get like a few Synchro Summons off already to make this worth it. It's not, not really good at all. Synchro Call, Trap Card. Target one monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but it has its effects negated. If you do, immediately after its effect resolves, Synchro Summon one Dark Dragon or Fiend. Synchro Monster, using only monsters you control as materials. This is a quick Synchro Summon Trap Card, which isn't the worst, because you could get off your second Synchro Summon in a turn. Kind of works against chain effects from going on. Finally, Creation Resonator, level 3, Wind Fiend Tuner, 800-600. If you control a level 8 or higher Synchro Monster, you can special summon this from your hand. It comes out for free, I guess. It's not the worst thing in the world. I could say about it. Free. Finally, the, probably the best, the best um, R and N archetype are the Aromas. They become a complete deck with this. You see plenty of this deck on the ladder, and... One thing I want to note is that they lose a lot from time limit losses. Like, there are so many decisions to make with Aromas. Even though they're a free-to-play deck, people can easily build Aromas thanks to these new cards. It's a lot of decision-making. It's really hard to play. And I've gotten at least three of these time limit wins because people don't know what to do. That's sad, but <laughs> it's the truth. Aramage Marjoram, level 5 Dark Plant, 2016. While your life points are higher than your opponent's, you can take no battle damage from attacks involving your plant monsters. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. 1. When a plant monster you control is destroyed by battle, special summons card from your hand, then gain 500 life points. If you gain life points, target cards in your opponent's graveyard, up to the aroma monsters you control, banish them. While it's a level 5, they'll come out for free, pretty much, so... That's it. And... It's level five though, so you won't run it like you won't run like three of these in a deck. So it's it limits itself there. This is the answer to the meta. It's the way to banish cards from the graveyard. This is the only way this deck does it, and they do pretty well because it's if you gain life points, you could do it once per turn. You could banish one to three monsters um, from the graveyard, I mean, cards from the graveyard, not just monsters. So it's a continuous source of Graveyard removal. You only have at least one of these in the deck, one or two in a deck. Pride wins. 
Continuous Trap. If you gain life points, target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. If you control an aroma monster and your life points is at least 3,000 higher than your opponent's, you can pay life points equal to the difference. Destroy face of monsters your opponent controls whose combined attack is less than or equal to the life points you paid. This is the least useful wind card. There's three of these new wind cards. This is the least useful one, but if you gain life points, target one face up monster your opponent controls and destroy it. That's a nice control ability. The second ability is one that you rarely even see, so. Armage Laurel, level 1 wind, 800 0. If your life points are higher than your opponent's, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you gain life points, target one non tuner plant monster on the field. It's treated as a tuner this turn. If this is sent to the graveyard, you can gain 500 life points. Not, not too useful of a card. It is a free special summon, though, so that's something that can help you get a synchro summon off in a tricky spot as well with the tuner considerations. But this is not the most important card that makes Aramages. They already have some tuner options. Aramage Gardening, Continuous Spell. If you normal or special summon an Aroma Monster, you can gain 1,000 life points. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, while your life points are lower than your opponent's, you can special summon one Aroma Monster from your deck. You can use each effect once per turn. This one's nice for gaining a lot of life points. Um, I've seen huge life point gains with this card. They gain 1,000 each time a special summon goes off. And it helps Dried Winds with its second ability, I guess. Usually this is just you gain life points and you trigger those abilities, kind of with the field going on at the same time. So a lot of those life point gain abilities are going off at the same time thanks to this card. Finally, Blessed Wind, Continuous Trap. Um, you can activate one of these effects. Send one plant monster from your hand to, or face up to the graveyard, gain 500 life points. Or target one plant monster in your graveyard, shuffle into the deck, gain 500 life points. Or... Pay 1,000 life points, special summon one aroma monster from your graveyard. Really good card. This is one of the core cards in the deck. Um, you can use the first two abilities to gain life points at will. Um, so then you can get those abilities going off like Aramid, Rosemary, flipping things. And then the third option, you can pay life points. And then you can resurrect monsters from the graveyard, which includes your synchro monsters. And Rosemary as well. And then you could use this life point manipulation with humid winds to have even more effects going off. So humid winds, um, if your life points are lower than your points, you can gain 500. So that you make yourself lose 1,000 and then gain 500 more. So you have multiple effects going off. It is a very hard deck to play, I must agree. And it's no surprise that so many time limit things. But... So make sure you have a plan when you are playing Aramages. They're not easy to play at all. That's the full wrap up of um, Fortress of Gears. I would consider buying this a little bit just for the Aramage cards, frankly. Like it's pretty, pretty interesting archetype. All right, last thing I'm going to talk about today is Carly Carmine for level up cards and skills. Let's talk about the cards. For cards, you get four each, so. Not a ton of cards, but you get a full play set of each. Fortune Fairy and level 5, Dark Spellcaster 0, 0. When you draw this card, reveal it, special summon it from your hand. If this card is special summoned from the hand, banish Spellcaster from your deck. So this one is a combo piece. There's no use of really banishing a Spellcaster, but it works with the next card. Fortune Fairy Who, this is uh, level 3, Wind 0, 0. When you draw it, special summon it. When special summon from the hand, target one of your banished spellcasters added to your hand. So you banish one of Anne, and then you get it back with who? Not a very great mechanic. Frankly, you could just tutor any card you want from a card or from a draw skill. So this is a very inefficient way of doing it. Next card's unacceptable result. Quick play. If you control a spellcaster, special summon a fortune fairy monster from your hand. So quick play is nice in that you could cheat out a monster at the end of your opponent's turn. That's the main use of it, I guess. And the problem, of course, is that these monsters get their abilities off when drawn. The fortune ladies get it when they're special summoned, so this one doesn't work in that way. This helps get more bodies on the board for synchro summoning, I guess. 
And the last card's called Lucky Loan, Normal Spell, Target One Fortune Fairy Monster you control, Special Summon One Spellcaster from your hand or deck whose original level is one lower than a monster. Also, during your next turn after this resolves, you cannot Normal or Special Summon monsters except for Spellcasters. So, Fortune Fairies and Fortune Ladies are respectively levels 1 to 6. Each one is one level from 1 to 6, so you could do... Pretty easy manipulation to control what synchro summoning you want. And also with fortune calling you can add three stars. So big downside of course is that you get you get the summoning sickness next turn. You can't play anything but spellcasters. And fortune ladies are a deck that synchro summons a lot, so other your other synchro choices are limited that turn. Um I'll have to say about lucky loan. Last topic is Carly Carmine's dual skills. She has seven unique dual skills, which is quite a bit for a legendary duelist. Secret Seeker, this is a drop skill. View one set monster your opponent controls. This skill can be used twice per duel. Very similar to Pegasus's Mind Scan, which was actually a very meta skill back in the day um, until better stuff came along. Useful against certain decks running tricky monsters like Warm Worm, which you want to just banish that card, so... Um, anything tricky against that, if you control monsters any other way, and if you know the meta, there's no real effect of running Secret Seeker. Miracle Power, if you control a face of Miracle Stone, increase the attack of all Fortune Fairy monsters you control by 300 times their respective levels. The skill will only activate if you begin a duel with a deck, an extra deck that only controls Fortune Fairy monsters. Okay, so this doesn't even... Uh, if you run Fortune Ladies, there's no way this this skill can even be activated. Anyways, all Fortune Ladies have zero zero, so this gives them the same stats as Fortune Ladies without the defense. So you'll need to run Miracle Stones, and then that's not even provided by the dual skill. So overall, this isn't worth it, I think. And even like a Fortune Fairy Chi is like an 1800 one tribute. Lucky Stones. It may be used on a turn in which you special summon a fortune fairy monster from its effect. Play one miracle stone from your deck and face down defense. You can use this skill once per duel. So there's some wrong text here in that they say play a spell and face down defense. I'm not really sure how that works. But I think it's going to get set in the spell or trap zone. I think this is going to be like... This is a lot better than miracle power because... Um, you don't have to. You could run Fortune Ladies with Lucky Stones, and it's a pretty easy way to cheat out your Miracle Power, your Miracle Stone as well. So you could just run one of those in the deck instead of running a lot of them. Lost and Found. Send one to three cards from your hand to the graveyard. Then an equal, add an equal number of Fortune Fairy monsters from your graveyard to your hand. This is a more of a late game skill. You need to have those monsters in the graveyard, and. There's not really much of a benefit unless you need them for a fusion or something. You don't get their effects off from getting drawn, of course. Fortune Teller, return one Fortune Fairy Monster from your hand to the top of your deck. The skill can be used once per turn, three times per duel. I think this is the go-to skill for the archetype. You lose a card in hand, but you get to control what effects are going off and three uses. Draw alone, add one lucky alone from your deck to your hand. You cannot conduct your normal draw on your next turn. You can use the skill once per turn. So, you could just run one draw alone for the deck and then you'll draw it right away. You'll lose your next draw, but then you'll get summoning sickness against other synchro monsters. Hopefully, your fortune lady every is so good against that deck that it's worth it and you could survive. I've learned that with fortune ladies... Every and you're playing against Luna Lights, you just set the card in defense mode, and you'll just banish everything they do until they have no more cards. That's the only way you can win against Luna Lights. If you play your monster and attack, you're screwed. Just saying. Finally, acceptable result for each Fortune Fairy monster you control. Add an ex- unacceptable result from your graveyard to your hand. You can use the skill once per duel. Same thing. Another late game skill similar to Lost and Found. Um, not very. Not really worth it. So overall, these skills aren't worth it. Um, Fortune Teller is okay for the archetype. Secret Seeker, maybe. Nothing crazy.
All right, so upcoming news, Kyber Cup's going on till April 12th. They'll probably have Stage 2 by Wednesday or Thursday next week. Hopefully everyone will get to Stage 1 and get through and get those rewards. Mission Circuit's happening next week probably. Gravekeeper's Visionary. Mid-April, Tag Dual Tournament. New cards, Wandering King, Wildwind. Gaia Drake, the Universal Force. Dual Quest in mid-April as well. Memories of a Friend. Late April, new cards and skill for Joey. Mission Circuit, Chain Closed. Late April, Duels Chronicles 5Ds, Majestic Star Dragon. For the podcast, thank you very much for listening. Subscribe anywhere you find your podcast. Just search the Dual Assessment. Find these notes on the dualassessment.wordpress.com. Sorry the notes are a little incomplete this week. Email me with anything at the dual assessment at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Twitter where I'm barely live dual underscore assessment or me at green ranger ccg thanks for listening everyone and i will see you next time